God calls us on a journey, a journey into the unknown, a journey into love and laughter, a journey into pain and despair, a journey where we walk together, a journey where we walk alone. So come, let's walk life journey together knowing it is God who invites us to journey and it is God who will journey with us. Good morning and hello Salem, how are we? We are here again, the start of a new week, gathering around laptops and phones and tablets and smart TVs in living rooms and dining rooms as we call one another to worship the living Lord Jesus as part of the church. So good morning and welcome. Uh, welcome if this is your first time with us on the live stream. Uh, if you've watched every single live stream, you are welcome. Welcome if you're watching live or if you're a few minutes behind or even if you're watching several days or weeks or months or even years after the event, you are very welcome here. For anyone who doesn't know who I am, my name is Andy Grice and I am the minister of Salem Baptist Church and on their behalf I am hosting uh, this morning's live stream. Today uh, we are going to be hearing about lots of new things that will be happening in the new month of September. Uh, we're going to be led in a moment uh, by the largest Salem music group since the start of lockdown including uh, a couple, Chris and Fiona, who uh, don't appear on screen but are adding their voices into the mix. Uh, I'm going to be speaking to you on Psalm 127. But before we do any of that, let's just take a moment. And as uh, Josh encouraged us a couple of weeks ago, let's just take a moment to sigh. <sighs> take a moment to be present here. A moment to be attentive to the fact that we're not just watching a TV program. We are gathering for worship. So let's just take a moment to be attentive to the fact that we are meeting in the presence of God. And just as a sign of that attentiveness, I invite you, if you're prepared, if you're able to light a candle with me as a simple sign of focus and attentiveness, as we say together, here in this place, now at this time, God is present with us. My brother, my sister, in your place, in your time, I declare to you that God is present with you right now. Amen. Amen. May we pray. Travelling God, journeying with us in our different lives, in our different spaces and different communities. At times you can feel distant. At times it can feel like you're leaving us to, to work things out for ourselves confronting us with ourselves, stripping away uncertainties. All our certainties get stripped away as we take stock of where we are and as we dream of where we want to be. Travelling God, sometimes you feel so close to us, holding our hands over the roughest places, helping us face the biggest challenges together, embracing us when the journey threatens to overwhelm us or, or we simply feel we can't go on. At other times you... You run with us, skipping along when the path seems obvious, stopping to feast with us as our paths meet and cross and merge together. Many journeys converging and joining, many different people learning to live alongside one another. Your living, breathing, loving, crying, laughing community on earth. So Lord God, for those times when we've almost given up on the journey, forgive us and keep us strong. Lord God, for those times when we've been too caught up in our own lives, Forgive us and make us aware of others. And for the times when we've made the journey of others more difficult, forgive us and help us to make amends. For the times when we've stubbornly gone in the direction we want to go, forgive us and show us a different path. In the strong and loving name of Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. So friends, I invite you now, if I can get my mouse to work, to join with 
Alex and Sarah, Helen, Linda, Chris and Fiona, as they declare in song to us the awesome truth that God is faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful and that each morning we see new mercies from your hand. As we meet together on this YouTube stream, we pray that you would speak to us now, faithful God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I just want to share a little bit of some family news. You may well have heard uh, that Ali has not been very well. Uh, she is now back at home and continuing to recover and sends her thanks for all the love and prayers of the Salem family. So uh, well done, Salem. Uh, and also just to say, some of you may have heard uh, that unfortunately Nick has fallen and broken his arm uh, and is now in Siren Sisters. So uh, love and prayers to Anne and Nick and uh, Nick as he recovers and Anne as she cares uh, for Nick. So we pray for them. Let's pray again. Lord God, we thank you for our church family. We thank you for the love and care that is shown within Christian community. And we pray for those who are 
are not well, those that we have named, those that we are aware of, but who, who haven't been named. And as their, their faces flash before our mind's eye, Lord, we hold them before your throne of grace. Ask for your peace, your healing touch where it is required. Come amongst us as a community, we pray, by the power of your Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, uh, by my reckoning, Tuesday is the 1st of September. Uh, and September, I think somebody has once said, is the, the changiest time of the year. It is a time of new beginnings. Uh, term starts for many of us involved in education or in school. And so it seems to me that uh, September is a good time to start some new things. So at Salem, we uh, our, our vision statement, our business, if you like, is to make missionary disciples. And uh, uh, this stream is one of the ways that we help disciple one another. Uh, but I think it would be good, and we talked about this at our last church meeting, I think it would be good uh, to try and have us meet in small groups. And this September, I want to provide two new opportunities to meet together in a small group on Zoom. Now, at some point, they may become live meetings, but we will maintain uh, a virtual meeting as well. So the first opportunity I want to provide is a Christian book club. I've been talking with lots of people and I've been thinking, oh, you really ought to read this book. And, oh, I've got this book on my shelf, but I've not quite finished it yet. And, and you should read it. And I just think it would be good for some of us to meet together and read Christian books in community just to share together. And so my proposal is that on the first Wednesday of the month, we meet together to talk about a, a book that we have committed to read together. So this coming Wednesday is the, the first Wednesday of the month. Now, I recognise that we haven't got very long to read a book between now and Wednesday, but we are going to meet on Wednesday. I will send out the details for that on Zoom, but just to discuss how it might work, share details and choose a book to read through September and we will meet to discuss it in October. So that's the first opportunity uh, in this new term to meet together for a Christian book club. And the second is, uh, I think it would be good to try and get some other input as well as the morning stream, just some different interactive uh, videos and resources. And there's so much good stuff out on the internet that's being made available through uh, the coronavirus lockdown. And I think it would be good to allow us to do that. So I am, I'm going to reinstate an evening service meeting. So the proposal is that we meet uh, on Zoom at 6.30 uh, to, to share together, to, to learn, to discuss. So this is an interactive group and uh, there's loads of good material, but I've come across some by an organisation called Sanctuary. Uh, it's a course that's four weeks long. It's specifically geared around our, our Christian response to our feelings of grief related to the pandemic. Uh, it's uh, just four weeks long, uh, and I'm just going to show you a short video that will trail this and hopefully whet your appetite for that. Hello, my name is Daniel Whitehead and I'm the CEO of Sanctuary Mental Health Ministries. Sanctuary is a non-profit a charity based out of Vancouver, Canada, uh, though our work is becoming more known in other nations too. Sanctuary exists to help the church have conversations and shared learning experiences that help people of faith to integrate their faith with mental health. We seek to do that through the lenses of theology, clinical practice, research and lived experience. When the COVID-19 pandemic began uh, surfacing at the beginning of March, our leadership team decided that we would try and create a resource to help people process grief and loss in these times. No sooner had we made that decision than we started noticing a number of articles and seminars and webinars and other excellent resources on the subject of grief. So we set ourselves the ambitious task of creating an easily accessible online short course that people everywhere could access, all within the space of a month. And I'm delighted to share it with you on behalf of all of us at Sanctuary Mental Health Ministries. In this resource, I've recorded some conversations with four of my friends. 
The first is one of our ambassadors, Dr. Hilary McBride. Uh, Hilary is an award-winning therapist, a registered clinical counselor based here in Vancouver, Canada. She's also a published author and a renowned podcaster who is regularly heard by over 10 million people worldwide. Then we have our other ambassador, Reverend Professor John Swinton. John is a world-renowned practical theologian, an ordained Church of Scotland minister, a former psychiatric nurse, and now a prolific academic, an award-winning author, and the Chair of Divinity at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. I then have my friend, Dr. Ruth Lawson McConnell. Ruth is a therapist who trained directly with Dr. Gordon Neufeld. She has over 30 years of experience as a counseling psychologist. Uh, Ruth is currently based here in Vancouver, Canada, having recently moved from New Zealand. Uh, Ruth is a global citizen, having been born in Scotland, raised in Brazil, and she's spent her adult life between Canada and New Zealand. Finally, I was able to interview Lawrence Chung. Uh, Lawrence is a hospital chaplain and spiritual carer. He's also an adjunct professor at the University of British Columbia, specializing in palliative care. Lawrence's interview was actually recorded between shifts whilst he was working at the hospital. Each of our experts speak to different aspects of grief and loss, which can perhaps fall under the broader categories of bereavement, loss of identity, and the loss of life as we have previously known it. Though our speakers speak to different aspects of loss, we believe the wisdom they share can speak to you, whether you're grieving the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job or income, the loss of freedom or safety, the loss of sustaining relationships. Whatever your loss is, your loss matters, and grieving is an appropriate and healthy response. So please use this resource, share it with others, and please also check out our other resources, including our podcast, our blog, our Sanctuary course, which is an eight-week study for faith communities to explore the intersection of faith and mental health. And all of our resources are freely available via our website at sanctuarymentalhealth.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. God bless you, and may you know the peace of Christ, even in the midst of these difficult times. So that's four weeks. It's a resource that's been made freely available, and I thought that would be a good opportunity for something to gather around on a Sunday evening and for us to discuss and share life together. I hope you can join with me next Sunday evening, 6.30pm. We'll give that a go. We'll try that for four weeks. Maybe try the eight-week course later. There are lots of other things. There's a prayer course. There's other discipleship materials that we can interact with. But I thought it'd be good to meet around Zoom. So that's next Sunday evening, 6.30pm. We will be kicking off the Sanctuary course. So that's just two of the things I'm hoping to start in September. But before I tell you about some of the other things that are going to be happening, I just wanted to share with you a video I received this week. Over the last couple of months, uh, I've been asking uh, to, for you to send in hello videos. And if you have one of those, please do send in uh, a short video just saying hello Salem. But this week I received a slightly longer hello than usual from Alex and Bradley. And I'm just going to share that with you now. Salem. Hi Salem. Hi Salem, it's I'm Alex so and Bradley! And just in case you were worried that Bradley wasn't all right, he's here, he's fine, he survived his holiday. And what else happened to you in the last couple of weeks? Well, in the last couple of weeks, I went to Swanage on holiday. Beautiful, oh. beautiful Swanage, right by the sea. So I was doing a bit of swimming in the sea, which was a lot of fun, as you could probably imagine. And yeah, I bought my goggles. And um, one time I forgot to put them on, and those of salt water came into my eyes. It was not nice. <laughs> and and also, when I was on holiday, I went to the tank museum, the Bovington one, which is only a couple of miles drive. Well, not a couple of miles, but more than that, about ten. So I went there, and yeah, it was a lot of fun, actually. Got a tank, played the World of Tanks game, which I'm sure a couple of you have heard about. Only a couple of us, not all of you. And yeah, that was a lot of fun. What else happened to you? Well, like, did you have a, a special birthday? And not just that, on the 13th of August, it's well, not exactly two weeks ago, but a couple of weeks ago, um, it, I, I turned 10, so 
birthday party. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for it to everyone who wished me a happy birthday on social media and Facebook. And also, and Junior Church. And thank you to Junior Church if any of you are watching this for the birthday card. Oh, I think I've got no, it you're, somewhere. You're all right. But, yeah. And if, if Stu's able to watch this, big thanks to him for the birthday cards as for, and the present, which was absolutely lovely. And what, was he, what was your present? Uh, oh, it was now. Oh yeah, the Leicester, the classic Leicester City football click kit, the home one. Uh, they they got they did pretty well this season. Right, we've gone over two minutes now, so uh, bye everyone. Give me say bye to everybody. Bye. Thank you for sharing uh, some of your news with us, Bradley and Alex. Great to see you on screen. If you do want to send in a hello video, it doesn't need to be as long as that one, but uh, please do uh, send that in to me uh, via email or uh, whatever way you can get it to me, really. Um, I've seen in the chat comments, uh, somebody's asked Alex how Bradley's feeling about school because, of course, school is starting this week. Lots of people are starting. Teachers, I think, are starting back tomorrow. Uh, many have inset days and then throughout the week, different people are starting uh, at different times. And so it would be good to pray for them. And I've asked Jo if she would pray particularly for the start of term, uh, but generally just to come and lead us in prayer. So let's pray as Jo leads us in prayer. Almighty and great God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we humbly bow the knee before you and acknowledge that you are our Creator God, our Redeemer God and our Sustainer God. Jesus Christ, without you we are lost and helpless sinners, separated from the love of the Father. But by your selfless death on the cross, we are redeemed and accepted and held forever in the love of God by the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge that we do so much wrong on a daily basis, but we also know that when we come before you in repentance and faith, you wash us clean again and again. At the outset of our prayers, we ask for your forgiveness and cleansing. Lord, we have so much to thank you for. Our homes, our families, our health, our jobs. But Lord, we pray now for those who are facing difficulties at this time for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, for those whose health is not so good right now, and for those with financial worries. At the start of the new school year, we pray for all those who have a responsibility for the education of our children, for those in government departments who decide policy, that they will have wisdom when faced with difficult decisions. We ask for clarity in decision-making COVID-19 is such an unknown to us, Lord, but you know and understand all things. So we pray that there will be those in authority who are listening to your voice and your guidance. We pray for head teachers, senior leadership teams and administrative staff in schools as they seek to make wise and right decisions on the running of their schools, each with its own particular and different needs and as they implement new policies to keep children and staff safe and well. We pray for teachers, teaching assistants, lunchtime supervisors and all those who will come into daily contact with children. We pray for wisdom, guidance, safety and reassurance for them. We particularly bring before you Helen, Jenny and Alex as they return to the classroom this week. We pray too for Robin as she starts her school placement and ask Lord that you will smooth all the difficulties surrounding travel. We ask Lord that they will know your hand upon them this week, that you will calm any fears and give them courage. We pray for parents that they will feel reassured that their children's schools are as safe as they can possibly be. For those anxious about their child's return, we ask you for peace. For the parents of children with additional needs, we just pray that those needs will continue to be met and that they will feel confident that their children are returning to a safe environment. 
we pray too for all the pupils. Many are returning to school for the first time in nearly six months. Help them all to settle into their new classes and for some into new schools. There will be those who are excited to be returning and those who are anxious. Those who will be seeing old friends again and those who will be missing them as they have moved to different schools. Lord, we pray for them all and ask that they will soon settle back into a new, albeit different, school routine. We thank you, Lord, for the Prayer for Schools Network and for the many faithful prayer warriors in Cheltenham who are praying for our local schools. We thank you for those in Salem who are members of the network. But we ask, Lord, that particularly at this time, you will lay local schools on our, all our hearts, that we will pray and that schools will feel uplifted and supported. Thank you, Father, that you are a God who delights to hear and answers the prayer of his people. So in that confidence, we bring these petitions to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you, Joe. I just feel like we're a family, praying by name for one another, sharing news via video. I've got a chat window open here with people wishing one another well, praying for one another. We are part of Christ's body. We are the church. But we're a church that's been separated, physically unable to meet together. Uh, and that's not normal and that's abnormal. Um, and we look forward to the day when we can meet together properly. And I'm really excited to say that next Sunday, the first Sunday in September, the most changiest time of the year, I'm delighted to say that we are able to begin opening up the building once more and start to meet together in three dimensions as well as two dimensions on our screen. And so I'm going to show you a little uh, welcome video to show you what that might look like. So we are a long way off uh, worshipping back in church as we were before coronavirus, but, but we're delighted to say that we are going to begin opening the building for Sunday meetings once again. So I'm in the car with uh, most of the family. Say hello. Uh, um, and we're going to go to Salem and we're going to show you what to expect if you come on a Sunday. So we've, we're here, we've arrived at the building, we've arrived at Salem. We've already pre-registered and let Andrew know that we are planning on attending. So uh, chairs will be ready for us. So all we need to do now is just check. Looks like the way is clear into the front door so we can get in uh, and maintain spatial distancing. So all we need to do now is grab our face masks and head on in. So everyone's wearing face masks and you're going to have to wear a face mask throughout your time in the building. First thing we need to do is sanitize our hands on this new machine that we've got. You put two hands under and it sprays just the right amount and then rub your hands together, sanitize your hands. Andrew is going to welcome us and tell us what we need to do. You are on the list, so you can go in. You're going to have to sit with your family for the rest of the service till we leave. And if you'd like to go in on the right, somebody inside will show you where to sit. Okay, let's go. Thank you. So everything's going to be shown on the screen. 
Once you're in your seat, you need to stay there until you leave or if you need to go to the loo. We'll talk about that in a minute. Mum, when will I go to junior church? I'm afraid that's not on today, darling. You've got to sit and watch the screen like everyone else. OK, then can I go to the back and get some colouring pens? Oh, I'm afraid not, Josh. Can't do that either, but I have bought some here for you to do. Thank Got you. your own. Thank you. Oh, can I just go and get a drink? I'm afraid not, Benji, but I have got a drink and I've brought a snack for you both. An Oscar-worthy performance just to demonstrate that you're going to need to bring everything with you, any colouring activities, pens, pencils, Bibles or any refreshments. I'm sorry Andrew and Ellen, we're not going to be able to share them with you. And guys, you need to take all your rubbish home with you, okay? Guidelines are that we try and avoid using toilets as much as possible. But of course, if you need to go, you need to go. So what we'd like you to do is just raise your hand, indicate to the steward that you'd like to go, and then make your way, maintaining as much social distance as possible, to the toilet. We've got a one-way system in place, so you need to enter through the back hall. If you need to queue, we will queue here. Enter into the kitchen and round. At this point, you are on your own. You need to wait and make sure that there's nobody else in the toilet. We suggest that you knock on the door and go in and do your business. Benji, we'll leave you alone at this point. And then exit round this way and return to the sanctuary, maintaining as much social distance as you can. Once the service is over, we'd like you to stay in your seat until you're dismissed by the steward. This just allows us to maintain spatial distancing will dismiss people from the back to the front. So Andrew's going to go first. We're gonna go out via the car park door so there's a one-way system around the building. If for any reason you need to leave before the service is over, please maintain this one-way system. So we're gonna go out through this door, sanitize your hands on the way out, into the car, and off you go. See you again next week, bye. So that was just to give you a little idea of what it will look like to come back to church uh, during the first phase of returning, which will be, I will continue to lead a service from my desk or others from their desks, and we will stream that into the sanctuary. So you will be able to watch the same stream as others are from their sofa. If you would like to come to the sanctuary and join with others and watch the stream, please let Andrew know and we will have chairs ready for you and it will just help begin to ease us back into uh, the second phase which will be streaming out from the sanctuary in the third phase when this is all over meeting back again as we were. A huge thank you uh, to my family uh, for taking part in that video and uh, some Oscar worthy performances there thank you thank you to Andrew and all the others that have helped put together the, the COVID secure building. A huge thank you to Terry for the, um, the uh, sanitizing stations that you put together. If you do go to the building as well as those, those excellent machines at the front door and back door, uh, there are hand sanitizing stations all around the building. So please do continue to sanitize your hands at all times whilst you are in the building. Really exciting, next Sunday, we're back. I hope uh, some of you will uh, take up the opportunity to come back into the building. So just let Andrew know that you want to do that. September, exciting times, the most changiest time of the year. I think we could write a song about that, couldn't we? Andy Williams, isn't it? The most changiest time of the year. I hope you are as excited about September and the new beginnings, the book club, Sunday evening service next week on Zoom 
and of course the beginning of opening our building. Things are changing in September. Uh, but before we go much further, I just want to stop and remember that actually the Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He does not change, even though everything around us may be changing. And our hope is in him. And so I thought we would just stop and sing again in Christ alone. the summer we've been looking at different psalms, a series through psalms with different people speaking on different psalms and today I want to look at a psalm that comes from the subsection of psalms known as the, the psalms or songs of ascent. Now scholars disagree over what exactly the 15 psalms of uh, 120 to 134 are actually about, the, the setting uh, that they come from, although everyone agrees that they are based around the theme of journey. Some suggest that they are designed to tell the story of the people of God returning to Jerusalem from exile. Some suggest that they were designed to be sung by pilgrims who journeyed to the temple in Jerusalem for one of the three major annual feasts and each psalm was sung at different steps along the journey. 
And so the songs of ascent are arranged in a way that means Psalm 120 should be understood from the point of view of being in a distant land, in hostile surroundings, and the 15 psalms that follow describe the journey on towards Jerusalem. Others suggest that the the psalms weren't actually sung along the journey, uh, but were used to represent the journey to the temple, uh, being sung uh, on each of the 15 steps that were outside the temple. Whichever it it is, and, and however these psalms were used, doesn't really change the fact that the songs of ascent deal with the themes of journey. And a journey that in many ways mirrors the spiritual journey of a believer. A journey that begins in a place of rebellion, a place far from God. And the journey goes from a place of rebellion to a place of saving faith. And the journey, of course, travels on ups and downs of life until we eventually arrive at the heavenly temple in the new heavens and the new earth. But today, I don't really want to focus so much on the the start of the journey, that place uh, where many of us find ourselves a a place far from God, nor do I want to look at the first step, uh, that step of coming to saving faith in Jesus. Although if you are yet to take that first step, I urge you, please consider Christ. If you need help uh, with how to consider the the claims of the Bible, the claims of Jesus, then please, I urge you, do get in touch. Uh, If you haven't got my email address, get in touch with us uh, via our, our website. I'd love to help you take the next step in your journey with Christ Jesus, whatever step that may be. But this morning's sermon doesn't focus on those first steps. Instead, I want to focus on on the middle point of the journey, if you like, that that middle third, if you like. You know that that time when you set off on a challenging walk or a challenging journey, normally setting off with great gusto and enthusiasm. And on on a journey like that, when the end is in sight, usually the pace will pick up. But often it's in the middle third of the journey when energy levels dip. It's usually during the middle third of the journey that you need to reach for the Kendall mint cake and have that that glucose uh, hit that that brings. The middle third, that point in a a long car journey when a a little voice pipes up from the back, are are we nearly there yet? The middle third, the point when you're rowing across a lake and, and the bank that you've left behind doesn't seem to be getting any further away And the bank you're heading towards doesn't appear to be getting any bigger. The middle third, that point in a pandemic when you can't remember normality anymore, but the possibility of normality returning seems like a a distant dream. The middle third, that point in your spiritual journey when? Well, that's what I want to consider this morning by looking at Psalm 127. So if you have a Bible or an app on your phone, Uh, I invite you to turn to Psalm 127 as we hear God's word read to us. But before we do that, let's pray. Lord God, as we hear your word read, as I speak uh, words based on your written word, Lord, I pray that you would use my words, the words of scripture, the meditations of all our hearts and allow them to be pleasing in your sight. Great God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Let's hear God's word read. Psalm 127, a song of ascents of Solomon. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them, 
they will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. So Psalm 127 is a wisdom psalm. It's not prayer, it's not praise, it's, it's not lament, it's advice. And the content of the advice is revealed in the opening verses as we are warned against self-sufficiency, against squeezing God out. We're reminded of that subtle relationship between human responsibility building a house, standing guard, and God's sovereignty. For without God, the activities of building a house or standing guard are, are less than useless. Building a temple without God is pointless. Making a pilgrimage to the temple apart from God is a waste of time. Dare I say, watching a YouTube live stream, even going to a building to watch a YouTube live stream, is a waste of time if God is not involved. I think what's in view here is an attitude of submission to the Lord, an attitude of reliance on God, a recognition that there is a spiritual, theological dimension to everything that we do. I wonder how many of you have come across the four stages of learning, sometimes known as the conscious competence ladder. The theory goes that when we are learning any new skill, we pass through four stages. Stage one is unconscious incompetence. That is, you are unconscious that you are incompetent. You don't know that you don't know something. So, for instance, driving. When you are a young child, you don't know that you can't actually drive a car. Uh, before a pandemic forces you to be a, a, a YouTube live streamer, you don't know that you don't know how to put together a live stream. The second stage is conscious incompetence. That is, you know full well that you can't do something. That time when you get your provisional driving license and you sit behind the wheel for the first time and you realise that actually you haven't got a clue. And that time when you sit down in front of your PC ready to press go live and you realise you don't know how to do this. The third stage is conscious competence. That is, you, you do know how to do something, but you have to really concentrate how to do it. Driving, when you are a learner driver and everything, it fills your brain with everything that you have to do. Live streaming, when you have uh, everything going on in front of you and you have to really concentrate to make sure that everything holds together. But then, the theory goes, if you do something for long enough, you arrive at stage four, which is unconscious competence. When you know how to do something so well, it becomes second nature. I would say that for me, driving has become second nature. I don't really think about the fact that I know how to drive. Well, I have to say, I don't think I'm ever going to reach unconscious competence when it comes to doing all of this that's in front of me streaming on YouTube. But here's the thing about this, uh, these four stages of learning. My fear is that we are so good at what we do in our day-to-day -day living that for most of us, we spend most of our life operating at stage four, unconscious competence. Why is that a bad thing? Why is being unconsciously competent at living not a great thing? Well, my concern is that when we drift through life being unconsciously competent in all that we do, I think we stop looking to God for help. And we start building buildings, guarding buildings, without God. The danger is that we arrive at what some suggest is stage five, complacency. I don't need God, we think. I've got this covered, we think. In fact, we don't even think. We just do and we do and leave God out and we build the house and we guard the city. And the psalm tells us we do so in vain. Coronavirus, the, the whole lockdown, has been a massive culture shock around the globe. Normality 
has been turned on its head uh, and we weren't able to work normally, shop normally, socialise normally. And in many ways, we were forced to become consciously incompetent in almost every area of life. And I suspect that, that lots of us, including those who, who have no or little faith, cried out to God for help. We cried out to one another for help. However, six months in, I think, you know what, most of us have got most of it figured out now. We're doing okay. We've sorted out our online shopping. We've, we've got back to living our lives unconsciously competent once again. Now, on one level, this is, is to be much celebrated, but not if we slip into a mindset of thinking that we no longer need God. That mindset that says, do you know what, I don't need God. At least I don't need him for the day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course I need him for the eternal salvation things, but not the day-to-day -day stuff. I've got my face mask, I've got my hand sanitizer, I've got my one-way system. I'm good. I've got this covered. But it seems to me that Psalm 127 reminds us, tells us that we can never really be all good, self-sufficient, have it all sorted, because without God, our work, our activity, our business, busyness is in vain. And so I think we need to develop an attitude of being intentional about committing ourselves to God. The morning prayer, even just a one-line prayer as we get out of bed. Good morning, Lord. What are you up to today? May I be a part of it. I think we need to build in moments throughout the day when we remind ourselves, when we become intentional once again about God's presence in us and with us. You see, my theory is, uh, pandemic or no pandemic, we should never truly be unconsciously competent in our day-to-day -day living. We always need to be aware of our incompetence apart from God, for we always need him. Without God, we cannot. I trust that this is obvious for, for salvation and for sanctification, posh word for, for growing in holiness, but it's, it's actually true of everything. If God is truly sovereign over his creation, as I believe he is, then, then you are unable to take your next breath unless God wills it. I am unable to speak, breathe, move, unless God enables it. We are not self-sufficient. And I think we see this in the final third of Psalm 127, the, one that, the part that speaks about children being a reward. I think what's in view here is, is simply that in the ancient world, children were a kind of retirement plan and, and so would need, be needed to defend you in your old age against injustice. I don't think this part of the psalm is to be a condemnation of those without children, nor is it a condemnation, as some try to argue, of birth control. I simply think it's another way of saying we are not to be self-sufficient. But it's the middle third of the psalm that I really want to focus on this morning. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Another way of translating that verse, for while they sleep, he provides for those he loves. How's your theology of sleep? I'm aware that many of you may well have slept through a few sermons, but have you sat in a sermon on sleep? How do you see sleep? Do you think about sleep? Or are you just unconsciously competent at it? Do you see uh, sleep as a, as a blessing or, or as a curse? Think about it this way. Do you think uh, there was sleep in the Garden of Eden before the fall? We spend about a third of our lives asleep. That's a lot of life. So what's it for? Many of us wish we could get more sleep. But I wonder if you, like me, have ever wished that you actually you didn't have to sleep. Imagine what you could get done with all those extra hours, an extra third of life. As a culture, we think of ourselves as so competent with our, our smartphones and our 24-hour shopping. And yet, as a culture, it seems to me that we're more tired and stressed than ever. I've had a number of conversations over the years with my darling children about sleep and I'm aware that they are watching this. Kids, sleep more. 
I spent a lot of my time trying to persuade ratty and crotchety kids that they need to have more sleep and then everything will be better. I've had these conversations when they were young and now they are teenagers. I am continuing to have this conversation about the importance of sleep and often I have this conversation to no avail. And yet they could easily say straight back at you. How often as adults are we the same? We think we're so grown up and yet often we behave like children who refuse to go to bed at a sensible time and I wonder how often God despairs of us saying, go to bed, everything will look better in the morning. There's a chance of course this is just me and I'm the only one who, who stays up later than I should but I suspect I'm not the only one to have watched just one more episode of a box set rather than going to bed at a sensible time. It seems to me that sleep is a blessing. It's a means of God's grace. And I mean that quite seriously. I think sleep is a means of God's grace. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit, right? But I am much more patient after a good night's sleep. So is patience really a fruit of the Spirit? Or is it a fruit of a good night's sleep? Well, here's the thing. It's both. For we are a union of body and spirit. And that's why the incarnation, the embodiment of the Lord Jesus is so important. It's so important that the second person of the Trinity took on flesh and became embodied, became a human being. To demonstrate to us that we too are a union of body and spirit. And we cannot look after the soul without attending to the body. And sleep is a gift given to us to minister to both body and soul, which means there's a moral dimension to getting enough sleep. Now, of course, there are all sorts of good reasons why we don't get enough sleep. Young children, health, it's too hot, it's too cold, there are noisy neighbours, the, the traffic outside our window, but there are also lots of bad reasons. And today's psalm speaks to those. Verse 2, in vain, you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. The psalm here isn't saying it's wrong to stay up late or get up early for work, but, but when we stay up late and get up early out of an attitude of self-sufficiency, when we forget that it is God who is building the house, when we forget that it is God who is at work in and through us, and, and, and we think that it's all down to us, it, then our work is in vain. And I guess that's what I'm driving at, that in the middle third of our life, in the middle third of our spiritual journey, it seems to me that there is a, a real danger that we start to think that we are self-sufficient. We start to think we no longer need God, and so we drift from him. And yet the truth is we don't drift away in peace to rest and relax. No, we, we drift from him and end up running faster and harder and working harder and stressing more with more anxiety and more stress. And, and then we think we need to work harder in order to alleviate that stress and so on and so forth. You see, drifting from God is a very dangerous thing to do. Another translation of verse 2 puts it like this. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For he gives to his beloved sleep. Eating the bread of anxious toil. I've done that more than once. When we stay up late and get up early, eating the bread of anxious toil, worrying and fretting. It's then that we begin to write God out. And we return to that life lived in rebellion to him. Walter Kelly was overheard once saying, it's when I don't have anything to worry about. I begin to worry about that, eating the bread of anxious toil. There's a story about a woman who, who was having trouble getting to sleep at night because she feared burglars. And one night her husband heard a noise in the house, went downstairs to investigate, and lo and behold, he found a burglar. And he, he says to the burglar, Good evening. I'm pleased to see you. Come upstairs and meet my wife. She's been waiting to meet you for ten years. How often do we 
stay awake worrying, eating the bread of anxious toil, or working, eating the bread of anxious toil. And yet God grants sleep. And here's the thing, while we sleep, he provides. While we sleep, the world continues to turn. And so sleep is a daily reminder that you are not God. I wonder if you've ever thought of it like that. Sleep is a daily reminder that we are not divine. I think sleep is a daily reminder to be consciously competent. To remember that it is God who must be building the house or we labour in vain. In the slog of the middle third of the journey as you, you're reaching for the Kendall mint cake, it's, it's just so easy to keep on plodding, to disengage brain and get through. And as we do that, the danger is that we ignore God. We build and guard and watch in vain and we plod for nothing. But sleep, sleep is a daily reminder, a daily means of grace which reminds us we are not God we're not divine, but physical, spiritual beings who need rest. And as we do, the God who neither slumbers nor sleep manages just fine without us. As we enter a new season of the pandemic and lockdown, as we enter the changiest time of the year, as we face a whole raft of new challenges and new stresses and strains on the body, we need to remember that we are physical and we are spiritual beings who need to rest physically and we need to rest in the God and rely on the spirit of him who neither slumbers nor sleeps and manages just fine without us. When we go to sleep, God is still sovereign. Amen. When you go to sleep, God is still sovereign, still at work in his creation and the world will manage just fine without us. And it is through sleep, which some say is a dress rehearsal for death, in sleep, we are ministered to. And patience and self-discipline and kindness and all the fruits of the Spirit come so much easier when we are well rested. And so, yes, there is a moral dimension to sleep. So let me encourage you. Turn off the TV. Switch off the PC. Put the tablet down. Go to sleep for the sake of your soul. When we think of spiritual disciplines, do you think of sleep? As well as Bible study and prayer, when we think of the spiritual disciplines, I think we need to think about and take seriously how much sleep we are getting. Friends, we're not designed to be self-sufficient. We're to, designed to be consciously competent, consciously relying on his grace, consciously leaning into the grace of his spirit, and consciously, I would say, relying on his body, the church, the grace of his community. I am not God. You are not God. I am not self-sufficient. You are not self-sufficient. Jesus is Lord. Amen? Jesus is Lord. So let's, in community, as part of his body, keep reminding one another of this truth so that we do not eat the bread of anxious toil. We do not labour in vain. Amen? Amen. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Friends, go and learn what this means. Lord God, I want to pray for myself and for my friends as physical, spiritual beings that you would allow us to be conscious on your empowering presence in and with us every moment. Lord, help us to be conscious of our sin and ask for your forgiveness on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And as we are, allow us to be conscious of your, your grace, your forgiveness, your love. Allow us moment-by-moment -moment to, to lean into that and rest in that. And when it comes time to sleep, would you allow us to put things down with you Sleep well and wake up afreshed once again to say, Good morning, Lord. What are you up to today? May we be a part of it. 
Amen. Today's been about a journey, the journey of the Songs of Ascent. And it seemed right uh, to end with a song from the Rend Collective about a lighthouse, the lighthouse that guides our travelling through this life. So I'm going to end with this song uh, from Ren Collective, My Lighthouse. So let's sing together. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you home. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to show In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence, in the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea oh, oh, You are the peace in my troubled sea Sing with faithfulness My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness I will follow you Oh, My lighthouse, my lighthouse I will trust the promise You will carry me safe to show reminding me of that dimension to sleep of dreaming and so uh, if you do have dreams and visions as you sleep please do 
share it with me or with one of the leadership team. We'd love to hear more about that. And thank you uh, to Jenny for the lighthouse picture that is on your screen right now. Remember way back when, I think this was one of the first pieces of lockdown art that Jenny produced. And it is as relevant now as lockdown eases as it was then. So as we journey through life, we look to him, the lighthouse, to guide our journey. So we blow out our candle as our meeting ends, but we carry the light of the gospel with us wherever we journey. Today, this week, in the new changiest month of September. And so we pray, God, you who walks with us in our shoes, bless our commitment to journey together, whether uh, virtually or physically. God who risks exploring the uncharted path, would you bless our risk taking to live out our hopes and our dreams? God who soothes tired feet when the going is rough, bless us and hold us and never let us go. So my brother, my sister, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.